this week. Okay. This week in Planet and the Stars, we're going to be reading two wonderful short stories. One is called Proof and the other is called Half-Life. And we will be continuing to pursue the issue of the science method, what constitutes proof, and also looking at a fictionalized account of a Nobel, double Nobel Prize award-winning female scientist, Marie Curie. So the readings, I think, will really test your imagination and ask you to think, once again, deeply about science. Jeff, what do you think of these two stories? Well, Marie Curie is almost my favorite scientist ever, I think. Uh, her story is amazing. She's won the Nobel Prize twice. It's a, <laughs> uh, not sure anybody else can say that. Um, and uh, proof is very good because uh, it's very imaginative because it involves beings actually living inside the sun. And uh, the science is very good. And it actually gives you a completely different way of looking at something from the way that our senses work. And that's why aliens are such a great character to have in science fiction, because it really asks us to look at the world from a completely different point of view. We haven't met aliens yet, but we can imagine and think about how their perspective would be very different from our own ethnocentric, Earth-centric view of the universe. So in proof, um, the... Uh, Beings actually, like I said, live inside the sun. The sun is hot and dense. And uh, so they seem to be sort of ethereal, not really with bodies. And, uh, but uh, they would die if they uh, went down into the center of the sun. And so they have ships that are made out of very, very strong material, uh, which is the same material that's made out of neutron stars um, that we know about it that really exist, except somehow they're able to manipulate this material. But it's just atoms that are really, really packed closely together. And they call it neutronium in the story. And because they live in this very high energy, uh, hot environment, uh, their eyes or whatever, you know, sensors you might imagine only uh, detect uh, photons that are very energetic. And so the kind of photons that we see that are visible light that come into our eyes, they can't see at all. And so they only see like x-rays. And so it's like they had x-ray eyes, you know, like everybody in science fiction wants to have. And so um, they can't even see things that are cold. And so uh, they fly from star to star. And in the story, they fly from Sirius uh, the dog star to our own sun and um, but as they're doing that they can't see planets so they can't see cold things and so uh, the guy in the story has a theory that there's some other things out there a wild and, and crazy theory um, and because you can detect them by gravity and so there's some stories of ships that have been pulled by gravity from some unknown unseen objects and so he's there uh, to try and prove it and once again, fiction is going to show us that we need human imagination to imagine and conceptualize things that we can't see. For characters, that can include emotions like belief or faith or conviction or vision, as in the life of Marie Curie, as she lies dying on her um, bed in the Alps. So please think about that which cannot be seen, but we can visualize and understand and enjoy the stories. Um, the thing about Marie Curie that's similar as well is that uh, when you come up with a theory in physics or astronomy, um, sometimes if it's way out there, uh, like this guy in the story proof, uh, people will just reject it out of hand. And uh, so you have to prove things, you have to use the scientific method, and even though as we've been telling you over and over again, scientists use the scientific method. They can be very emotional. And uh, so uh, a person has to prove their theory. And Marie Curie's special uh, barrier, or whatever you want to call it, is that she was a woman at the time that she was working. There were very, very few women working in physics. And so she had to maybe work a little bit harder uh, for the men to think that she was doing some good work. Which makes her achievement all the more remarkable. And that's sort of the same scenario in Proof, where the scientist is really an outlier and isn't believed. 
So we have some similarities, even though Marie Curie really lived and really accomplished a great deal on the earth, and the other is a completely fictional character living in the sun, which as far as we know is impossible. Okay, enjoy the stories.